What's up, everybody? Okay, so let's just let me move this microphone. Ooh, does that sound bad? Ooh, ah, my bad. So, peep this out. We're going to make this short and sweet. There might not have even been an intro at the beginning of this podcast because I want to revamp everything. I want to change up and use some B-roll footage. If you don't know what B-roll footage is, um, hopefully I'm inserting some right here. If, you, if I didn't, then I'll explain to you... Um, you're seeing different bits of, uh, like, as we're going on garage ceiling, we've got videos out the window, me leaving, uh, shutting the door, uh, the road as we're driving, the trees, uh, everything else that you're seeing as far as just, you know, like, little video clips, slow-mo, music in the background that kind of help you build the scene in your head in between moments of me talking and narrating the, the yada da yada da. Um... So yeah, and if I did insert B-roll, everything I just said won't be in the podcast, slash whatever the hell we're calling this video log that I'm doing on my couch. But if I did insert it, then all of this will be cut out, and we'll come back in right here with me saying, and that's B-roll. So, when you have B-roll footage, and you start putting it together, it's more difficult than it sounds, because you have to kind of learn where you're, you have to record to edit. So when you're recording your video, you need to be doing that with your final product in mind, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, that, that's 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 the gist of it. There's no reason to bore you to death with details, okay? How's everybody doing? Y'all watch the NBA Finals? One and one. Raptors, Golden State. Oh no. Who y'all got? I'm going to Toronto. I want to see them win. I really do. I really do. I don't know why. I haven't watched bas- basketball in forever. For some reason, I wanted to watch this finals, and I'm all on with Toronto. They, uh, I'd love to see them win one. The Sonics need to come back. We need a basketball team again. Um, let's see. So just to go over the week, uh, you might see me doing some things called jump cuts in this podcast. I may not have time. I may. I have some side projects I'm trying to work on to better this uh, platform and better the channel for all of you. But jump cuts are where I'm talking, and if I say um or something, you'll notice that it that it just kind of glitches like real quick. Huge, huge YouTubers use stuff called jump cuts. Uh, Peter McKinnon uses jump cuts. He uses them a lot. Gets rid of that dead time. Gets rid of those ums. As I'm getting better, I'm not going to need them as much. I can already feel myself getting more natural at this crap, but let's see. So just to give you all a quick heads up for what happened in the last week. Um, Brooklyn and I, my wife, we went out pod, uh, podcasting. We went out garage sailing over the weekend. I'm going to go ahead and link to some footage here in a sec. Uh, I'll bring in the laptop footage. Everything we bought, um, you'll see highlighted in yellow. And uh, it, we did good, man. I think we did real good. Um, there's a couple things we screwed up on day one on Saturday. But I went back out Sunday and I decided I'm going to make a vlog out of this. I made a vlog of my knee surgery, uh, the stitches being removed, and then sending back the stuff to Wal- to Amazon for my podcast equipment. Haven't put it out yet. I just kind of took Peter McKinnon's advice and decided to start filming as if I was going to put out the content, the vlog, and then even if you don't release it, or purposefully don't release it, just so you get in the habit of recording that way and learning how to do uh, block transitions and zooming in and shaking the camera and pulling it up and zooming in and shaking the camera and pulling it right and spinning the camera into my shirt and covering it with my hand, stuff like that, just to get in the habit of the practices I need to do. But now I need to actually make one. And I've started the process of labeling all my videos because when you're using the camera and your cell phone, you upload them all into your, onto your laptop or your desktop, whatever you're using. And then you have these files that'll be... The, 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 the cell phone files will be separated from the video files from your camera. And so even though, I guess technically I could put them in chronological order. I wonder if I could do that. And then it would mix the files up with each other and then I could upload them that way. Because what I'm being forced to do is put like the letter A or the number one at the beginning and then B, C, D, and then grouping these together in different sections. Like I have some B-roll footage. Um, This isn't like the musical B-roll. It's more of the snappy like uh, Shaun of the Dead, you know how they'll stand up, I forget his name, really cool director, producer, they'll, they'll like stand up and like they put their belt on and the camera zooms in, click, and then the jacket, and then the, the hat, and then the gun, 
and then it just all these little jump cut these little clips kind of that's also a form of b-roll it's just a different kind and uh I, hopefully well let's just see if i insert that right here we're up and um it's about ready for that garage sale time you know what yeah. hang on coffee tra, puff, tra, tra. So that is, if I inserted that where it should be, that's me making coffee, uh, and it made it more entertaining, it made it cooler, right? So I can use those B-roll pieces of footage in between stuff. So roundabout, me rambling, we did the garage sailing yesterday, we went all day, we went ham. The night before we looked everything up, plotted out our route, I found out about places up north, things coming up in the next weekends. It's really important to just start and get going, but... um. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. And then I want to bring you to the computer to show you on Saturday at least. I haven't mapped out everything for Sundays yet. I will have that most likely in the vlog. Or I'll do it on the podcast and the vlog. Both. We'll see what happens. But here, let's just go ahead and go to the computer real quick. So that way I can show you what we did on the first day. You can see where I won and where I lost. And uh, how much money is going to be potentially made off the stuff we got. Let's go. Well, thanks Mike for queuing me in. Now, real quick, for organizing your information, I highly suggest using OneNote. Not a sponsor, just works really well. A friend of mine hit me to it, and it's great. It works on my phone, my wife's phone, my desktop, my laptop, her phone. We can do grocery lists, everything else through here. It works really well. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the, the meat of this thing. So this is what we picked up Saturday. We just got a wild hair. We saw some signs saying, hey, garage sales. We said, you know what? We're going to wait till tomorrow. Let's just do it. So we hit two garage sales, uh, three actually. We only purchased stuff at two. The very first garage sale was a huge Disney collector. She was sticking to her guns and she was checking things on eBay. I didn't realize that till toward the end after I'd already bulked some stuff together and I just bought it and you know what? It is what it is, but let me show you something. Right here, Gary Vee's right, Mug Life. These were sold not that long ago. How long they sat on the market, I do not know. Um, but I think it's it's interesting. You pay 50 cents and you're able to sell for that much. It's a huge markup. This one's a conundrum. We paid $4. Uh, someone bought this for $20.75 plus, plus $30 shipping from Australia. Okay. Not to mention, this one in question doesn't have the front part that catches the candy. You know when you put a quarter in the machine at, well, wherever you get your candy in your machine? It has that little mouth to catch your M&Ms or your Skittles. This doesn't even have that. That being said, uh, they also were selling these for like five, six bucks have sold. So I'm hoping that we can hold out and sell ours for as much as they did. But that's also sitting on it for a while. So you got to be realistic with this eBay stuff. I'm not going to lie to you. Here was another little mistake. When I looked this up, this is a keepsake by Hallmark. There's a matching one that, see the Pez in its mouth? It's not an actual Pez dispenser. It's shaped like that. It's an ornament. Now, 125 for 995 is good, but they had the matching set with this and the snowman for 25 or 24, something like that. I assumed when I saw this box behind it, it was the same thing. It's not. It's Carlton. If you look right here, you'll see that. I didn't pay enough attention, and this is only 495. Um, yeah. So there you go. Live and learn. Little things, people. Little things. 1978 Six Flags Magic Mountain Amusement Park map brochure. Pre-owned. Okay? 73 bucks. Paid three. Are you drilling yet? I was. Ours is on a foam backer. I don't know how that's going to affect the price, seeing as how this is the fold-up brochure. It does appear to be in decent shape. Um, I just, I don't know. I'm hoping because ours is on a foam backer, it's worth more. But it's going to be more difficult to ship because you can't fold it up. So, you know, looking back, I don't know. Hopefully it worked out. Hopefully it worked out. If we can even get 45, 40 bucks, 30 bucks, I'll be a very happy camper. Obviously from the pay, you know, try and make up for some of the other failures. The cups I'm really happy with, that I'm happy with. This, a dollar, ten ninety nine. Problem is we don't have the shoes. So we'll see how that works. Hopefully I can do it for six nine nine, seven nine nine. Here's where it gets a little tricky too. We paid fifty cents for all these buttons. But as you see here, this one sold for $350 plus $378 shipping. That's great. As we go down, we couldn't find any that had sold. You see some for charity. Those normally get purchased first. 
bids by now I mean four dollars who knows so that's a rough one here not too happy with this purchase either to be honest with you paid five dollars we have the 11 piece nativity set but it does not come with the wooden background here you see that back there it doesn't come with that so all right we'll see what happens we'll see what happens it's already boxed up I'd have to put it in something else to put a sticker on it but it's already set up for shipping so that's a good thing then we come down here to oh my phone beeped all right super professional we come down here collectible 75 year old Disney anyone that thinks that Disney movies are worth twenty thousand dollars are wrong everything I can tell is that's just falsely inflated prices so people will buy movies it's a it's kind of a scam they're not worth that much I mean some of them are worth like 100 bucks for sure I mean look into it do your own research as Eddie Bravo would say look into it but don't don't believe everything you read in here just because you go on eBay and press sold and it says one sold for ten thousand dollars nine thousand dollars seven thousand dollars it doesn't mean that I put my little mermaid video up and then used a separate account or had a friend purchase that video for seven thousand dollars so that when you see my video up there that sold for seven thousand you look at other videos I'm selling and see that the bidding's only at say 75 or 100 and you think oh my goodness great chance to buy and you purchase a video for 100 bucks that's not even worth 20 you see the scam there so keep that in mind this was the epic fail this was the haunt my dreams epic fail 1577 I don't have to tell you anything I don't have to tell you nothing you see this what do, I have, what do I have to say? What do I have to say to you? Nothing. That's that. You take out this one, this failure, this somewhat failure. I might even say take out this one right there. You just took out $25. You drop it down to 20 bucks, And then you work on the buttons and see what happens. Uh, I'm okay with that. There's a few things I do differently for sure. The best part about looking at this is the following day on Sunday. The vlog coming up. And I'm going to go through one of these on the vlog with you about all the stuff we got Sunday. We spent $29 and everything we got has a huge profit margin. I'm hoping that shipping stuff that I learned recently isn't going to hold me back. But yeah, looks pretty good. So enough of me talking into this microphone wondering how I sound. Let's go back to me because I know how I sound in the podcast and a little better than now, I'm sure. So Mike, take it away. Okay. Now that you've seen what we made, or potentially will make off of those lo- those uh, those purchases we got, I'm not gonna BS you. Uh, we haven't sold anything yet. I haven't even posted anything yet, because from there to Sunday was just nonstop thinking about how we're gonna map out our plan, where we're gonna go. Now we have a table covered in some really cool stuff. Yesterday's haul was even better. Uh, you're gonna see that in the vlog when it's done. Sunday's haul, we got everything that we got for twenty nine dollars total. And uh, the poker chip set that I got alone for $5 is, so has sold recently two times for $50 plus, plus shipping, and it's heavy. So I know the market's there for people to buy them. That should cover everything we purchased. And um, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a move in process, but I don't want to brag about something that I haven't done yet. So once we make the sales on eBay and once I have the proof in the pudding, I will show you the money that we're making. And before you say anything like, Oh, what about gas money? You spend gas to get to work, don't you? Okay, you want extra revenue? You Okay, eBay fees, PayPal fees, fair enough, fair enough. Okay, so you don't want to go spend 50 cents on a mug that you can sell for $11 or $15 on eBay. Because why? Because you have to work for it? Because you have to pack? Okay, fair enough. Check this out. In your attic, in your crawl, underneath your bed, in your closet, where do you keep that junk you're not using? Because if your excuse for not building a podcast or not building a social media network platform or not buying that camera or not, maybe it's a tool you need to start your garage. I don't know what your side hustle is. I don't know what your business is, but you have an aspiration for something. I have a friend that wants to start a food truck. She's going to start a food truck. I know she's going to because she's a capable, confident woman who knows what the hell she wants and what she's doing. I have another friend, another woman. You see a trend here? Another woman who's going to start a meadery. It's going to be bad ass. I know it is because of her dedication level. Now, when you have businesses like this or you have aspirations for that and you have a real deadline set for yourself and you see where the money's going to come in and where it's going to good. At the same time, if you're not if and even them, but they've they've pretty much got what they've they're they're learning as they go. I mean, so am I. I'm not I don't know. I'm not preaching nothing. I just, ugh. But if you haven't even gone as far as mapping out the finances of it yet, 
Or your biggest hurdle is, I don't have the money for that yet, but I will soon. Okay. Well, how can you get that money now? Now, one of the, uh, a, a really, a really good quote that Gary V said that I think is just, uh, just really nails it because, hang on y'all. You know what? This is horrible, but I don't care. You're going to be along for this journey. I don't remember everything. All right. Now, let's see here. Where's my quote at? My favorite quote. One of my favorite quotes from Gary anyway. Gary said, so many people could be successful. The problem is they try to get there too fast. They cheat and then they lose. It's not super complicated. Everyone's so passionate about looking successful that it fucks them up from being successful. There's a flip side of that. If you already have the business and now say so you have a YouTube channel with a small following or a Instagram uh, you're an Instagram influencer, an influencer of any kind on social media, and now you're just diarrhea, in, in affiliate marketing down people's throat. You you took branding way too early, and now you don't show that you've actually looked at other products. You just look like you're. Put, I mean, when I'm looking up Filmora information, when I was using Filmora as my primary editing software for video, I liked the guys that showed the video software, uh, the the video editing information. But the problem was that. When you looked up what video editing could do what, you'd have people telling you Filmora could do it all. Click the link below if you want to get in there. They're just telling you that because they're getting paid by Filmora. I immediately don't believe them at all. It's 2019. People's BS radar is out through the roof. That skeptical hippo, that skeptical hippo look, that's real. People can, their people's BS detectors are way better than they used to be. No one's falling for the... The Nigerian princess who will give you $50 million if you loan them 10000 right now. No one's falling for that, okay? We're way past that. So when you start doing stuff like that too quick, you're shooting yourself in the foot. You're crippling your business. Just like Gary said, you're trying to grow too fast. Focus on growing yourself. That'll come in time. Now for me, if I'm doing certain projects, I like using Dremel. I've used Rotary Wizard. I've used a couple others. I'd have no problem doing reviews on those and showing people how they work and how they're comparable. But I wouldn't be selling out if I said Dremel's the way to go. I'll promote Dremel when I'm doing work like that. Because for the simple fact that I know it's a good product, I know I'm not cheating anyone, I know it's the it's the gold standard. If another one comes out and I'm stuck being paid by Dremel, then what? I can't review that one? It's slippery. So you really want to make sure you've established yourself. Just don't don't think about the money right away. Think about content. That's what I'm doing. Think about creation. That's what Gary did. That's what everybody does. Create. Peter McKinnon wasn't in this for the money. Peter McKinnon was in this for the vlogging. He wanted to use his abilities, his photography abilities, his cinematog- his cinematic ability, and build a channel and build something unique. And he did. And it's phenomenal. By the way, are Canadians the nicest people ever? Ever? I mean, god damn. Anyway, now he's at a point where he can sell stuff to you that he built or made to make your life easier and you know he's telling you the truth. Because he's shown you products that aren't good. And he's shown you products that he has to use and then shown you when a better one comes out. Okay, so that to me, that 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 my BS detector goes, wow, okay, I can believe this guy. I will click his link. I will give him affiliate marketing money. Uh, the flip side of what Gary said is what I was getting at a second ago, a minute ago, which is that you've also got to be realistic with yourself. If you're making excuses... If you're building this fake wall around your life and pretending that, oh, well, I have these, and I'm only using this as an example. If my friend watches this, I'm not picking on you at all. Uh, I, I need these nice cars for this reason. Okay, that's great. Do you really? Or is that what you've told yourself during the process of convincing yourself to buy it? Now, here, I'll, I'll use myself as an example, okay? I'll use myself. I got the Xbox One X on Black Friday for deals. Granted, I did wait till Black Friday. I made an intelligent purchase, I thought. Um, excuse my watch as an example, too. I don't even have it on. I told myself, as I went to get the purchase, should I get it? I was like, Ooh, that's so nice, though. Ooh, I like it. I like it. And then, I can get that one, though. That one's even better. Well, let's think long term. If I get the better one, it'll look good for longer, right? Like... 
you just start making up this BS. Like with the Xbox, I had planned on doing some streaming, which I tried to do. And I failed from one, lack of dedication, and two, my video editing skills are trash or were trash and are starting to pick up. I, I, I can't possibly stream without the video quality, the, with the video quality that I had. So even if I want to get into streaming, it's going to be a ways down the road. But I convinced myself when I got that Xbox that I got that Xbox because I'm going to stream. And in order to stream, I need the high 4K capability, which you do, right? You don't want to be streaming on the old Xbox One. When I went to start doing podcasting a year ago, uh, well, I want to, but I got to wait till I have the, the camera. I got to wait till I have the this. Wait till I have that. Okay. If those things, one, are those things really stopping you or are you making stuff up so that you have an excuse to not do it? Two, if you do have genuine things you need, like let's say, let's say you're making a brew, a brewery, you need a building, you need a location, you've already got equipment, or maybe you need the equipment to put in the location, and you have a place to store it right now. Okay, where's your money at? Okay, you don't have the money, but you can save it on this timeline. Okay, now, this is when it's counter to what Gary Vee said. You can get that money for that product sooner, not by the, the, the bad ideas of like, prostituting yourself on on social media for these marketing places to get to pay them or affiliate marketing or whatever else but you can get that money by looking at your life and being realistic what did you lie to yourself about what do you not really need i i'm gonna build credit with a credit card now that i have my my all my debts paid off so i'm not saying you shouldn't have any form of a of a, a leash at all a credit card can help yada 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 but as far as car loans car notes the high insurance on those um what for what purpose you can pay for AAA. you can get two cars at an auction for two to five grand those cars are paid off you do the maintenance on them you have AAA. you're set you're good you don't need to spend the money now how much money are you saving every single month it adds up i quit vaping i quit smoking weed i quit drinking i quit smoking cigarettes not in that order but as I quit the first ones for health reasons, for peace of mind, for I'm not doing good in life, I noticed a side effect of that. Money. Money. You don't realize how much you're spending on your daily coffees. I was, dude, you're talking three, five bucks a day? Add that shit up, son. Add that shit up. Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Oh, and it's Saturday, so I want to get the one with the whipped cream and the whoop de whoop de whoop de whoop de whoop de whoop Oh, but I have a card, and the card I get points. Shut up. How about you don't spend any money, and then the points don't matter, do they? Make coffee at home. So that's what I did. I bought a coffee pot. Bought coffee. Cheaper end. Mid-grade. I, I'm, I ain't gonna lie to you. I bought, it. I bought a decent coffee. It ain't the best, but it's decent. And I make it here every single time. I've had coffee twice since I bought that at the coffee shop up the street. The ladies are like, we miss you. How have you been? Yada, yada, yada. Me and Brooklyn are like, uh, good. We just, it's, it's not expensive at home. It adds up to like five cents a cup. That's not how it is here. So that was the thing we had to do. Vaping. I thought it made me feel better. Boom. Got rid of that. What was the positive side effects? Money. Lots of money. If you're doing the jewel, you know you're spending stupid money. And even people that aren't using the jewel, they'll still do the free base style where it has the juice and the coil. You're not paying for juice. You're not paying for coils. You're not paying for replacement mods. You're not paying for batteries or chargers. None of it. All gone. Oh, it's a small amount of money. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh-huh. Agreed. Now take that small amount of money and stuff it in a shoebox. Add it up. Okay? It's just the one thing. Now quit the weed. Take all the money you're spending on bud and hash oil and wax and whatever. It's 2019. People got all kinds of weird shit now. Take all that money. Put that in the same shoebox every month. Keep putting the money in the box. You're not spending much, huh? Add that shit up, son. I don't have time to send stuff on eBay and do this stuff. Uh, what? Get stuff from your house. Sell it takes time. You're right. So does sitting around watching TV. Like I said last time, sincerely look at your life and in the last two weeks, do a real audit of your time. What have you been spending your time on? I'm not trying to beat a dead horse here, but y'all know you can do better. I can do better still. I'm still trying to do better. I'm learning as I go. See the lighting's a little better in here? At least I think it is. See the sunburn? Where's it at? You see the sunburn right here? All up in here? That's from garage selling yesterday. When you go garage sale and you hit three or four houses, right? We stopped at 12 or 13. And we stopped because I realized my face was on fire. And I didn't have any sunscreen. Went from 8 a.m. until 2 p.m. 
Now, I should have been able to knock out a lot more houses, but I'm simply unfamiliar with what I'm looking at and what sells. So while I have a camera in my pocket with my cell phone to record what I'm doing, don't worry, I'm blanking out faces and addresses. I'm not letting no one get on blast. I'm nicer than that. So anyone that watches this that I talked to about the podcast yesterday, don't you worry. I wouldn't do you like that, boo-boo. But I got the camera right here recording, okay? Then I got the camera in the car. Then I got my wife doing the B-roll footage out the window of like when we're hitting uh, Pacific Highway or Des Moines Memorial Drive and then zooming in, zooming out. And I'm going to edit that together for a vlog. Now I'm building content while I'm building a skill set Okay, so I'm multitasking these things together. Now, once I get better at the market and I know what to look for, by the way, Gary ain't lying, mug life. If these mugs sell in any way, shape or form kind of quick, whoa, whoa, that's a stupid come up on these mugs. You're talking like 25, 50 cents a pop at these garage sales. And the same mugs have sold in the last month for $14.99 on eBay. I mean, you saw the list of stuff. So that's just the first day. When you see the second day, you're going to be like, whoa, for real? Yes, for real. No joke. So hopefully, not hopefully, it's going to be in the vlog. I'm just hoping the vlog comes out before next week's podcast. It's still rough. I see a lot wrong with this right now. Like the fact that Einstein's not centered behind me. And I was pretty freaking sure when I started this that I had centered it behind me. Uh, But it's not. So little things like that. Another problem I got right now is... I want to do the sports card thing still. I really do. Now, as far as sports, sports card, Mike, is concerned, it seems like a great idea. I'd love to do it. But is it on brand? Is that going to work with this channel? Okay. Then we have what Future Me was talking about last week, about swearing too much and talking too fast. And that's an issue that I think that the business, the business person of me um, I want to continue this video podcast with all of you, but I'm not sure if I should be doing this like, okay, the Mike Roach, instead of show the Mike Roach channel and on the Mike Roach channel, there's the Mike Roach show, which you got right here happening live. Holla at your boy. Not live. It's not live, but, um, then on top of that, we will have the looking at the equipment that we're getting and what we're using and whether it's working or not working. I'm going to probably break that down with all of you and how it works. Then some tutorials maybe on how, once I get going a little more on how do you can get going and break down how simple it is to really get started. So we've got the micro show on the channel. We've got the tutorials. We've got the DIY and selling stuff on eBay, how to sell it on eBay, how to package it properly, how to make this easy on yourself. And then the vlogs showing you us doing everything. So you have the vlogs uh, and through the vlog, you'll have tutorials, you'll have all this different. So we have different setups on the same channel. Now, is that too much content? Should I make a sports channel and this channel and that channel? So I'm kind of having these debates in my head. Now, one of the things that uh, Sean Connolly said that was really smart um, in his podcasting 1.0, 2.0 is like 450 bucks a pop, like five payments of 450 or something, something crazy. I stopped looking when I saw 450. I'm not paying you. Sean, you're awesome. I'm sure it increases people's YouTube tremendously. I can't afford it. There's not a chance in hell I'm paying that much money to somebody. Um, I appreciate you though. And I liked your 1.0 and I like your content that you give out for free. It makes me trust you more. It makes me almost want to do it, but I'm not. Uh, thank you though, Sean. He's never going to see this, but one of the things in the 1.0 training that he said, which is free was that having an all having, um, how do I put this? His channel, for instance, think media, you'll have reviews on camera equipment at different price points that you can use affiliate marketing in. So people will buy those things or look them up on eBay, Amazon, whatever, and he gets paid for it. At the same time, he gets to be honest and he's telling you these are where I would go at these price points, whether it's Nikon or Canon or whatever. He's not giving me one brand. Tripods, he, that's where I got this tripod was from his recommendation and it works great. Then there's the side of it where he's showing you how to grow your channel. But building stuff for think for media and growing your channel are two separate things that kind of bounce off of each other, right? So if mine is a side hustle, motivation, get off your ass, so Gary V meets vlogging with Peter McKinnon, how many things can I have that are actually going to encompass each other before it's just, whoa, this channel's a mess. You know what I mean? So that's kind of where my head's at right now. I really want to have time to sit down with my uh, my part-time mentor and BS with them. Um, so looking at my whiteboard, I was supposed to get this stuff done for them with uh, um, 
some listing information and like uh, stuff for an algorithm. I'm not doing the algorithm or the coding or anything. Who, who are you talking to? But um, just figuring that out. And I've been so deep into this and then that business that I'm working on the side with those friends. The vlogging. I mean, a lot goes into this. If we rolled the credits, it would just be Mike Roach, Mike Roach, Mike Roach, Mike Roach, Mike Roach, Mike Roach, Brooklyn, Mike Roach, Mike Roach, Mike Roach. So that being said, that's the podcast. I'm not beating a dead horse today. I'm making this short and sweet. Uh, oh, one last thing. UFC. Did y'all watch that? Anthony Smith. Woo! Choked Gustafson t- t- almost to sleep. I mean, he put it on him. He said it too. People would be sleeping on him for getting he's a black belt. Damn, dude. I wish he didn't have the hesitation in the John Jones fight, but that's a lot of pressure. It's some bright lights. You're going against the GOAT. I mean, I get it. I get it. I'm sure people that went against Michael Jordan in his prime in the finals were like, there was a little extra, you know, shit, shit, shit. So, man, I wanted John, I wanted Anthony Smith to win that John Jones fight. Nothing against John. I just, as much as I love greatness, I like seeing champions get the throne too. Uh, yeah, but that's the podcast. I appreciate the hell out of y'all. Shout out to, to my homegirl, Hillary and my brother, Rick for doing their thing. She's got big plans. Shout out to the homie, Juliana. She's doing big things. I'm proud of her. Um, and shout outs, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to shout out. How about shout outs to shouting people out? Cause you care. Now that was it. I'm keeping this under the 30. Um, appreciate y'all i didn't do the ad break this time because i ain't got ads yet and i'm not gonna keep bsing y'all but i might do it next time i don't know see i don't know but this has been mike roach i appreciate y'all take care thanks for watching another episode i appreciate you hit the like button hit the subscribe button share to a friend comment whatever your heart desires either way i really appreciate your view and i i'm happy you came to check out the content Up here, you're going to see something about subscribing to the channel. And over here, you're going to see next week's episode or last week's episode, depending on when you're watching this. Appreciate you. Take care.